I think my fondant, I mean my dummy, which is wobbling everywhere because I stuck it down with double-sided tape. <laughs> but when you are going to cover your cake with fondant, you want to have a reasonably smooth underlayer. Obviously with the dummy, it's very easy because it is so firm and you can really like scrape it on there like I'm doing now. If you've got real cake, just fill in any gaps. Make sure you trim the top so it's nice and flat, all that stuff that you would normally do. Um, slightly regretting the size of my dummy. Oh, I chose such a large one. It was already stuck on the board. I was like, great, just reuse it. <laughs> And then this terrazzo effect, I don't know, do you know what it is? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I'm so into it. I'm so into it. In a kind of slightly unnatural way. <laughs> it reminds me of my childhood. Everything when I was growing up was that kind of like speckly tiles and the whole story. I'm very into it. Um, but I'm going to show you some pictures now if I can get my computer to share again. I don't know, I have I'm not actually sure it was sharing just now or sharing in the video. I don't think it was. Never mind. I'll see what I can do. Okay, so I'm just plugging up the bottom this gap a bit so that it's um and the same if your cake doesn't go all the way to the board, just plug that up with a bit of icing so that your sides are nice and smooth. Because you don't want gaps that then where the fondant will um Kind of form a dent or something. Okay, here we go. So once you've got your sort of basic layer of icing on, I'm just going to use my, my scraper. I have a scraper like this for this activity, like a smoother scraper thingy but you would just hold it on the side and smooth the sides. So this is how you get kind of a nice smooth butter icing. You can see there are these air bubbles. Those go away if you just smooth over them enough times. So like here, you can see there are gaps. Then I would just come do a bit of poly filler. Just make sure that everything is filled in. And the smoother the underlayer is, the smoother your fondant will be. That's just the unfortunate truth of it all. So take your time doing these underlayers, even if it seems like a waste of time. You're not going to smooth them out with the fondant. How's yours going there? Pretty good. good. So I'm putting this on extremely thin because I don't, because it's not a real cake, I don't really want to waste icing on something that no one's ever going to eat, which is why I'm making it so thin. But um, if you make your butter icing too thick underneath your fondant, you're going to end up with a situation where it starts to kind of bulge. So it needs to be quite a thin layer anyway. Don't go too crazy. And fondant, I don't know, fondant for me, I'm starting to dislike fondant actually a little bit. I'm not sure people really eat it um, or really like it, maybe is what I mean. I don't really know. But um, so I think there's this temptation to put a thicker layer of butter icing because it's going to taste nicer but I think it ruins the E or it makes it more difficult to work with the fondant. Okay, so my sides are reasonably smooth. Again, it doesn't really look like that in the video. Let me get some more light on here. Maybe it's the light that's making it look like that. And I've got some icing peeping up over the top. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just take my palette knife and just Go inwards from there. 
And that could give you a nice square corner. And you can just smooth up the top at the same time. And again, the bunch of icing is quite forgiving. If you find you've got an imperfection, then you just do it again and just go over it until it's nice and sweet. Okay. I'm not going to spend hours on it because that's just the underlayer, but you just want a nice kind of starting point. Um, if you are doing dummies like I'm doing, then you can just brush it with water and go straight in with the fondant um, since no one's eating it. Um, and the reason to do dummies is so I actually make dummies quite often because I will make cakes with displays and stuff. So um, if you're trying to get together like a portfolio of cakes and stuff, then you might be looking at them. Okay. Let's that guy aside for the moment. So change it. And then we're going to kind of mix up our fondant. Okay, so you need about a kilogram for a normal size cake. This was a three kilogram bag, so I've used one, probably about one third of it. So I'm just going to cut up a piece. You don't have to weigh it out. It's not really that crazy. It's, it's easier to work with a slightly bigger piece than you need. Um, but I mean, that's going to be plenty for that cake, I think. So a very tall cake will is much more difficult to cover. So then I would get yourself a bit extra, just so you've got something like a bit of you know something to work with. Okay, let's look at these terrazzo pictures. I'm not sure if this is going to show up in the recording now, but oh sorry, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, in some ways it is um. Better to just do a white butter icing underneath your fondant if that is better, if that is possible. Not always, some people want the butter icing to be chocolate or whatever. Right, then I'm going to do this thing that I do with the smoother. Okay, so it's the curved side and I just push it down and I until I hit the board and then I peel it away. And this usually gives me quite a good bottom edge before I um so this is what I'm talking about so this I cut in with a knife but I didn't go straight down okay uh -oh. <laughs> Right. And when you come to doing the colors and the speckles and all that stuff, I think it probably is a good idea to have a kind of a reference picture. Um, I did a few different test runs before I did this, put the class on just to see what would happen. And I must say, it took me a few goes to really get the shapes and the colors to look quite realistic. But um, it's such a like a common pattern now. I see it everywhere, everywhere now that I did this cake. Um, I see it everywhere. Okay, so around the bottom here, it's now quite smooth. I've got these little edges that I would like to get rid of. So I'm going to use my smoother, still curved side at the bottom and just go round, just to smooth the sides a bit. Especially if there's a finger mark or something you want to get rid of. Um, if you have two of them, use one on top because it's very tempting to put your hand in there to hold it still and then you'll have a big hand from there. And you'll also quickly see now if there are any um, air bubbles or problems. You see them as you go around, they'll sort of bulge out. Just pop them also with a pin, get rid of any, especially they're big ones. Okay, now 
first things first, all these little extras, you can see there is some butter icing mix in with these. I would still keep them um, and reuse them. I just mix it in. Doesn't seem to go off or anything. I think there's so much sugar. But if you worry, you just toss it out. It's just a small quantity. Um, and obviously the butter icing will give it a little bit of color or chocolate or whatever. So I save these bits and turn them into dark colors, like black or whatever. Now for these edges. So to make your edges more sharp, so you can see these are quite curved here on the edge. Take your smoother, one smoother there and one smoother there and work them together. And you can spend any amount of time doing this. It is very time consuming to get a nice smooth edge on every corner. I've actually started doing a slightly different technique where you turn the cake upside down, but it doesn't always, it doesn't always give you the perfect edge either. I don't know. I'm still working on my theories about it. I'm finding that the smoother is sticking quite a lot onto the top of the cake. So I'm just gonna, just a little bit of mazina on there just to stop it from sticking. I don't know, and I think it depends on the person who's ordering the cake and your own sort of personal views. I like a sharp corner. I think it looks nice. I don't know, the trend. But um, I probably would charge extra <laughs> for a sharp corner because it's quite time consuming. If you get to a place, so I don't know if you can see on this side just here, the fondant is quite thick just here, and it's sort of not. Oh, no, no, don't do that. I just do that. So, here's a big air bubble there. Can you see it? Where my fondant yeah. is. Okay, so a nice deep pin prick to get that air out. And just push it on. I don't know what I did here. What is going on here? Okay. I should have washed it. Anyway, never mind. Sorry, getting back to this bit here. So it's like bulging a little bit. You can just, if it feels like it's very thick fondant and it's not straight down, you can just work out some of the extra by smoothing it down, 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 down. And you can see that gives me this little piece that I can take off. So sometimes, especially if it's just a really thick little edge or something, that's, you need to just do that. Okay. Um, I've lost my train of thought now, where was I? Yeah. Anyway, so, so you go with the edges. I'm just gonna do this a little bit now. We're almost around to where I started. There's another air bubble there. I think it's actually the same place because there's a pin mark. Just squeeze it out. And sometimes just um, sort of rubbing over it with your warm hand can make it stick onto whatever's underneath there if you do find those air bubbles. Okay, I'm more or less satisfied with this situation. Around the bottom here, so I have a small bit of fondant still sticking out. You can just cut that with your knife if you want to neaten it up something like that. Or you can just put like a ribbon or something. Usually these cakes have something around the bottom there to hide those slight imperfections. And um, you can get it quite, quite smooth. So if you want to, or you can just, as I say, put a ribbon or something there, piping it over, whatever floats your boat. Okay. Right, how are you going? Are you covered? Yeah, covered. Looking covered. good. Okay, then we're going to do this effect. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, oopsie, I just put your finger on there, is, oh, let's just tidy a little bit. Let's do that first. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is choose your colors that you want to use. Okay, so I'm going to just go back to the how do I do the screen share? Here we go. Share. So if you just look at the colors again, oh, how do I make this the one? I don't know. I'm just gonna get my things in there. 
I don't know if you can actually see that. Um, yeah. yeah. So there are lots of options. And I think you can pretty much do whatever makes you feel happy on your insides. So most of them have a kind of a white speckle, especially if the background is not white. And another color speckle. So like if I look at this pale blue one here, there's dark blue and white, and then there's the same dark blue and a pale blue in the bigger speckles. But anyway, my point is to two colors probably for the speckles. I don't, there's no point in speckling white over white though. So if your background is white, choose a different color. And we're going to mix up some paints for this. Okay, so. So you can use powdered colors or gel colors. It doesn't matter, whatever is working for you. I did find this white gel color quite useful. I'll show you, it makes it show up nicely on the cake. Um, and I'm gonna use some of this quick paint just to water down the colors. And then I think, what should I do? What am I doing? I quite like the blue and the blue. Should we do that? Well, the pink and the yellow and the blue. Okay, so maybe yellow. Um, gray, maybe gray. Anyway, you can just choose some colors. It doesn't really matter what you use. Pink and blue. Uh, Okay. So for the speckles, and I suggest that you might want to do a little test run of this before you do it on your cake. Stop sharing. Well, actually, I'm going to go and leave it there. Um, you could use an old toothbrush or a new toothbrush. Actually, I probably wouldn't an old toothbrush for you to do it. <laughs> but you want something with bristly bristles. So something that you can flick because they're going to flick it on. Okay. So that one was quite good. Um, this one was okay. The bristles are a lot softer on this one. Um, these ones worked quite well, but it took ages. So it's also quite bristly, like a firm bristle, but it was a small one. Um, so obviously it doesn't hold as much paint. So you have to keep refilling. Um, and then you're going to need another one to paint on with, but we can look at that one's texture. Here come some children. Hold on. No, they're not coming this way. Okay, so I'm going to speckle with blue. Um, to make my paint, so I'm going to just put a drop of the color. You could just speckle on straight with the color. In fact, I'm just going to do it because you know what? It, um, this cake's not for anything, so I'm just going to do different techniques and you can see what happens. Okay, so if you just go with the straight gel, Oh, this is air bubble. Go away, air bubble. Okay. Um, can you see it? No. Right under the picture. So when you just do it, you're going to flick it on and you get a very fine spray. No. Okay, which is what you want. If you want it to be lighter in color, then you need to mix it with something to lighten the color. So obviously as the gel comes out, it is very dark in color. I'm not sure that it would be distinguishable, this what I've done from black. I think it looks the same. So you might want to just water it down with the quick paint. So the quick paint will make it runnier but not necessarily much lighter in color so then you can start to see the blue on the edges there let me just show you a speckle with that see it's not really distinguishable i say it still looks like it could be black or you can use this white uh, gel it's not really a gel gel is very um misleading it's like more like a white paint. It's got this kind of paint vibe to it, in which case you mix just a little bit in. 
So you can see now, now you can really see the paler color. Okay, there we go. And then that you could splash on. I did find sometimes that with this white, when you add the white and it's all a bit thicker and you get these um, those which is not desirable. In which case maybe just thin it out with a little more of the quick dry. You could probably just thin it out with water, but I would be concerned that it would um, uh, not dry very quickly. So then you end up with something that you can't work with for quite a while. Okay. And you're going to speckle your whole cake. All right. So you can just kind of, once you're happy with whatever you're speckling with, you can just go ahead and speckle on the top of the cake. So as you do it, you'll see the speckles will land on the top because it's, it's not a very scientific process. But when you get to the top of the cake, just try to do it straight down. Because if you do it from the side, like, like if you do it from the side like this, um, the, it's like CSI, the drops have directionality. So for instance, that one there, I don't know if you can see it, but what you want is for them to fall straight down. So they're round droplets, not, not splatter droplets, I don't know. Okay. And again, you can do this as much or as little as you want. Some of them are much more speckly than others. Um, you could do it with more than one color. I'm going to see, just trying to clean my hands here to do one of them. I'm gonna see what will happen if I now speckle with white over it or slightly off white. I want to see what will happen with that. Here's my other little brush. Okay. And when you paint onto fondant, the fondant is a little bit greasy. Oh, you see, it actually looks quite nice to see that. I don't know. It's up to you how you want to do it. Gives it a kind of a bit of an additional texture. Um, the fondant is slightly greasy. So when you paint on it, you'll see now when we do these little actual painting bits, um, you might need to either use the quick dry. The quick dry should cut through the grease quite easily. Or if you're using the white base as your kind of base of your paint, um, you may need to do a, a second coat because you'll see it kind of peels back from the cake because it's got grease in it or fat in it or whatever. Okay, right. How's your speckling? It's done. Done. Okay. Right. Let's paint this cake. Okay. So now mix your colors that you're going to paint with. Um, I've got yellow. Let's drop it in there. Small drop of yellow. Small drop of pink. Uh oh, it's a big drop of pink. I try the gray as well. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. And then I'm going to add the white to all of these. Let me just show you before I add the white. So if you just had the quick dry. Brush, sorry. Just have the quick dry in it and then you paint with it. It comes out kind of like a watercolor. Can you see? So you'll be able to see through it. Camera switch with your drink. Here we go. Okay. Sorry about that. That's I don't know what's happening here. And my husband's like, I'm coming, I see it, I understand, I know. <laughs> I was like, okay. Anyway, it looks like you're going like a Boeing there. That looks brilliant. Yes. So. Cool. So what I was saying before I got cut off is with the white gel, it gives you this kind of opaque look that you're going to paint over. And what you want is exactly what you're doing is to paint these kind of random shapes, not too um, samey, samey every time. And not to, oh, here we go, now it wants to join. Yes, okay. 
Oh, I don't know what it's doing now. It's just showing a picture. Okay. Anyway, so you want to paint them on. If you want them quite big and well spaced, that's an option. If you or your other option is to have them small and dense. Again, I would find myself a reference picture or something that you can kind of copy the idea of what you want. Let me tell you this right now: that big and well spaced is going to save you a lot more time than small and close together. And try and keep it as random as possible. My pink looks more like maroon here. What is happening? Um, oh, there we go. And obviously, the speckles underneath, as you paint it in, are going to mix in with whatever's on top. So just have that in your mind. If you leave it to dry longer, it probably would be less mixy any, but I think it's going to mix in. And just play around with the shapes. Again, bearing in mind that our uh, um pieces of stone basically that are mixed in so when they cut through it it might cut it in a you know in a it, they're not all stone chip triangle shapes um where's my reference page everything just got closed there and i was trying to like um and again, obviously, so to look at this with these reference pictures now, how do I share? This is not going my way today. Share, 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 share. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, you'll see that if you look at a picture of it, you'll see that they some are big, some are small, some are dense. So it's really up to you. When I did this the first time, I just basically had my paint palette like this and I've just mixed whatever felt like I wanted to have. So even use my speckle color to make big chunks as well. And you can even have them slightly overlapping if you want. Um, if you've got them well spaced, then I wouldn't bother with overlapping ones. Um, And keep it random. So keep your colors random, keep your um, shapes random, and keep your sizes random. Okay. But also these shapes, you want to have corners on them, basically. Um, I'm doing exactly what I just said not to do. They're not random at all. I've got a whole bunch of yellow ones together. Um, I, I don't know. So. I can dip between the pink and the gray and it doesn't see in the blue, it doesn't seem to make such a big difference. But if I dip it in the yellow, my yellow will be contaminated. So then just keep a spare brush maybe for your lighter colors. I don't know. As I say, I'm very into this whole vibe. But just keep going. with the colors and the whatever. Are you still there? Yeah. I'm being paranoid now. <laughs> uh, and I have no idea what was recording and what wasn't now. Um, but if you are having any issues later and it's not in the recording, please just let me know. I can always yeah. make a little video for you, whatever it is. <laughs> it's not been my day in terms of technology here. And sometimes my children like unplug things. So usually I obviously shout at them first and then ask questions later. It wasn't them this time though. Also, so when you get to the top or the bottom of whatever you're making, so it's like the same with any pattern. You want to think of it being part of a continuous pattern. So don't only just do complete shapes at the bottom. You can have a shape that starts and ends as if it had been cut off like that. Um, 
Yeah, and so really it's just a question of painting all over the cake, which I don't know, it was quite time consuming. I did a few taste runs and I think I did three cakes with different shapes and styles and vibes. Um, and it took me uh, yeah, quite a long time to paint them to complete. But um, obviously if you're doing the further apart they are, the less you have to paint. The closer they are together, the more, obviously more spec, more things you have to paint. And for me, it's one of those techniques that you just have to keep going with it to get the real effect. You know, when you start off, you think, oh, what's, what's really happening here? You know, is this what I want? Um, but so a few times, as I said, I did all these test runs. And then I came back and look at, looked at what I've done. And I was like, oh, that actually really does look like terrazzo. Um, whereas when I had been working on it, I had thought it was a bit you know, looking at it really closely and just looking at the, you know, each individual shape, not so much looking at the overall kind of vibe. And so you can't really add more speckles after the first round of speckles, because otherwise your speckles will be on top of these things that you've painted, which um, that's not really a problem, but it just, so this is supposed to be the final product cut through or whatever. So you didn't, wouldn't really see a speckle on top. And I'm having that problem with my yellow. So even though I've used the white base coat, my yellow, the speckle is still peeping out because the yellow color is quite light. So maybe darker colors are better for this. Oh, it's a lot. Oh, what am I doing here? Blue. The same obviously at the top here. So I've only done sides so far because I just want to keep my camera angle at the right angle. But as soon as I go on the top, I want to continue my pattern really. So when you get to the corner here, you would want to um, perhaps paint one that goes up and over. So you don't just have this weird empty seam section so that your pattern is continuous. And I did see when I was hunting down ideas for this, I did see um, a few uh, stencils that have the pattern and I did think that would make it a lot easier to have a stencil and then even if you're painting just to copy the shapes because the shapes for me was quite it's a bit of a challenge because all I apparently can draw is diamonds and triangles <laughs> how are you going good it looks brilliant from here. I can't really see that closely, but from what I can see, it looks awesome. It is nicely. This is always the hard part, is knowing when to stop. Yes, I agree with that. Um, what do they call that? Hmm. Um, what's that woman? Uh, Coco Chanel, I think it was her. And she said something like, to put on all the accessories that you plan to put on and then take one off. Yeah. If you can't take it off the keg. <laughs> yes. So I've already done about half of my cake now, maybe a little bit more. Um, but I'm quite pleased with the way it's looking. I feel like it's got that terrazzo vibe to it. Um, I don't know, what time is it? It's 10 to. What are you going to put on top of your cake? Do you have a decoration or an idea or anything in mind? Not at 
present, I'll see what inspiration strikes me. Strikes you. Because what I was going to say is along the lines of what we did last week with the butter icing, you could paint something on yeah. the top if you wanted to paint a flower or something. Oh, now I'm making a flower. That's not what I meant to do. And also because it's stone, so I'm not sure, I doubt you can see this in my little video, but my colors, let's just hold this up. Oh, wait, is this where we're looking here? My colors are not terribly well mixed. They're still a bit speckly because I haven't like spent time mixing them in properly. But that's okay because that's how stone would look. You would have not necessarily a uniform color. Um, yeah. I don't know, so my jams, I've been selling my jams at a market at the Baxter Theatre. And uh, we took my daughter because I had to go restock or whatever. So we were wandering around and every like, second stall, I'm like, oh, look, it's Terrazzo. And she's like, mommy, it's so embarrassing. Please stop that. <laughs> she's eight, so just, you know. Going on 18. <laughs> I don't know. I had children so I could be an embarrassing mom. I'm joking, that's not why I had children. <laughs> you know what I mean though? Like let me yeah. just be as embarrassing as I can. <laughs> similar here but I do also think maybe to come along and make a few little smaller ones you know in between just here and there because obviously it's you know cutting through those pieces is quite a random process you might cut it at the top of a chunk or the bottom of a chunk or through the middle you know could be anywhere so just yeah just play around with it and what you like. I don't know, I find it quite funky. And just also go back to where you started. So I've been sort of working my way around here and this is my first few which are really quite a bit smaller than my most recent ones. So then when obviously when I get back to the start point again you know, just try and keep it even. Always when you like working on a cake, it never seems to get smaller, it only ever gets bigger, your patterns and things. And this, because it's so random, it's very easy to kind of accidentally go a bit kind of crazy there. I don't know. I find it's quite therapeutic as well, just sitting, painting on little shapes. So if you go back to the first things you did, like so you can see it most clearly on this little yellow one here. I'm not actually sure how clear it is in the video there. It's pulled away a little bit from the background of the cake. That one's quite obvious as well. If you find that or oh, there's a problem, just go over it again with another, 
a quick layer. Just it just sometimes does that because of the grease in the cake. Like uh, just didn't stick so well. Again, this technique is so random and kind of natural that it, I don't think it really matters. But I'm just pointing it out in case you're having a problem with that. Okay, I think I've covered most of it. There's no blue on the side. Uh, most of these sides, so I'm going to just take it off the turn table so I can do the top. Stuck my fingers in there. And I feel like it's quite a nice backdrop for something, but I, I'm not really sure. I don't have a plan really for how I'm going to decorate the top of this. I'm probably not going to, but. Um, It's the kind of thing that's, you know, so fun and kind of funky that you could put anything. You could put a flower, you could put a bow, you could put lettering, you could put anything. Sticky loader. I'm running out of colors here. How are you going there? Good. So I've done the top and sides. Perfect. Just a random little border around it. Excellent. I'm thinking of the top. So, I don't know, but is there anything you want me to show you that you would want to do? I'm actually fresh out of ideas. I'm flustered because my <laughs> internet died. <laughs> I'm thinking just random shapes because I think that matches the effect. So I've pulled out a bit of my gum paste. Oh, good idea. Now I'm just making. Right. Okay, I'm calling my I'm calling mine done at this point. There we go. Just uh, unrelated, and I know it's not even the others aren't here, but this is the chocolate that it was in the mold earlier. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. In fact, actually, maybe that's this could make a good topping kind of. Yeah, that could also work. That's the that's also that a nice shape for it. Yeah. 
Um, I should make some more, maybe. Maybe I will do that now. Um, because also now the colors don't match. <laughs> but anyway, so that's that's the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Fun. Why? Why? Okay, slightly. Um, if you have any questions, I think I always say this, but any time, in case. Yeah. And yeah, I don't have anything else to say. Yes. But thanks so much. It's been wonderful. Yes. Uh, this is, is this the last time I've seen you for yeah, a while. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you next year what my budget says. Thank you for being so enthusiastic. It's very, um, it's fun to teach people who are excited. Yes. <laughs> but thanks. Cool. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. Yay. Cheers. Bye.